Uh, greetings, everyone. I am delighted to uh, present uh, the paper uh, that uh, was prepared by uh, Professor Dr. Srijal uh, Seshadri, uh, uh, respected uh, uh, academic and the organizer of this uh, conference. Um, um, and uh, uh, I'm delighted to present this paper. This is on um, uh, various aspects of digital transformation that relate to education and uh, how does it uh, pr promote and uh, uh, help the aspects related to sustainability and quality uh, thrive and uh, flourish in the education sector. There are a wide range of uh, aspects related to uh, education, starting from the preschool level uh, education till uh, PhD level, and even uh, beyond that, continuing education uh, that happens over time, uh, in which digital transformation has played a very important role in the last uh, few years or even a couple of decades. The teaching has moved from uh, classroom setting to uh, virtual online setting wherein the students uh, can learn at the convenience and ease of their homes uh, using computers, using laptops, using um, phones, smartphones uh, and, and uh, tablets and so on. So the power of digital transformation has been really huge and that is why we can actually call it not just a technical um, revolution, but more of a socio-technical, socio-economic technical kind of revolution, where it really brings in enormous change to the entire society. So in this regard, we, uh, we um, uh, uh, review the literature and uh, explain in detail about uh, the various uh, types and aspects and forms of digital transformation with examples, with the uh, quotes from other studies um, uh, uh, on uh, different stages of uh, education where digital transformation has been uh, instrumental in uh, revolutionizing the education uh, and how uh, it has uh, uh, demolished the barriers of uh, 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 inequality and uh, uh, also uh, what we uh, call as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, infrastructural deficits and so on. So we have this big issue of digital divide and digital gap, which is being rapidly uh, addressed by the governments and uh, at different levels at the national even international organizations, uh, state level and, and district level, a lot of uh, efforts have been laid across the world to ensure that there is, for example, broadband connection everywhere uh, and even going into the optical fiber connectivity and so on. So I think that part is very important. And uh, um, uh, we have given a lot of examples here to uh, uh, explain specific uh, instances where digital transformation has helped. Mm, I would um, uh, like to uh, also add that uh, uh, some of the papers we did before um, in the context of uh, digital transformation and education, in the context of COVID pandemic in particular, uh, in these papers, a couple of papers which we had published before, uh, we had found that uh, the uh, extent of uh, uh, comfort uh, level uh, which is uh, exhibited by uh, students to uh, take up the um, uh, you know education services online uh, has been uh, much higher uh, for the uh, more um, uh, well-to-do uh, students who have uh, uh, the means to get access to good uh, sources of internet 
and also digital systems like computers, smartphones, and so on. And also uh, to the students who are um, um, uh, who who live in the areas where the connectivity is high. And uh, so it's it's a question of two things. One is uh, 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 income and uh, access to resources, and second is access to uh, connectivity itself. So one may be a, a rich person, but if they live in a region uh, that is uh, not well connected to the uh, digital systems, uh, then the digital transformation cannot work. Similarly, um, one may be living in the center of the city, heart of the city, and uh, have access to the connectivity part, but not access to the resources to procure the uh, connectivity and the digital systems they also would uh, suffer, particularly when it comes to the education. And that is where a lot of public investments, public infrastructure is also useful. If you take, for example, a country like the US, uh, there are a lot of uh, places like libraries and, um, you know, libraries which are just public libraries and also university libraries, which are open to the common people. Uh, and uh, you, you you can access free internet there. You can get access to all the kind all the kind of education materials there. A similar thing also happens in the schools. So particularly in the rural areas, in the areas where uh, in in the areas where a lot of poor people live, uh, they do most of the digital stuff in the classroom uh, because that is where they have access to all the internet and stuff. So that um, uh, kind of public investment is required uh, and. Um, uh, combining those insights with what we discuss in this paper, uh, I think um, we can uh, have a, a very comprehensive view on how digital transformation can uh, help uh, the education sector to have a sustainable development in quality and in uh, uh, terms of reaching the people at large. Uh, and, and and do it in a very inclusive way um, and, um, uh, and and that is very important education sector is not important only because uh, because of the uh, uh, fact that uh, it's going to you know it is a sector in itself which contributes to the economy but also because it leads to um, development of human resources uh, which is important for many aspects, for economic aspects, because the students who have uh, high quality education today are going to be good citizens tomorrow who can contribute to the labor force, to the economy, but also the citizens who, they can also tra get uh, evolved into citizens who are um, uh, who are peaceful, peace-loving and uh, democratic and so on. All the qualities that you need to have a successful democracy you have in the education system and that can that quality can be achieved using digital transformation um, uh, we also did another study uh, uh, before uh, which is related to this study uh, which is about uh, how the um, educational um, uh, attainments the, the quality levels uh, are lagging behind in certain countries and uh, they are well developed in other countries and how the digital transformation has helped the more advanced countries to have better levels of education attainment. And if the countries that are poorer and uh, do not have that much of digital uh, technologies, if they have to catch up with the advanced countries, how far they can succeed in promoting the educational uh, quality. So I think that is something uh, we have to think about and also um, we have to think about education not only as a sector in isolation, but uh, but a means to create well-informed citizens and high-quality labor force and human capital for the economy. So there are social aspects, political aspects, democratic aspects, economic aspects, and so on. So that is why in this paper we call this as a socio-technical uh, means for uh, a digital transformation as a socio-technical means for uh, developing the education sector. So uh, I'm not uh, getting into the details that we explain in the paper because that would be that would mean a very long uh, presentation for one hour or more. 
uh, i'm just uh, uh, giving you a broad idea and also c- connecting this paper with other papers in the literature that we did before uh, so that uh, you get a holistic picture broadly and i would invite all of you to uh, read the paper itself it is going to be published in the journal um, that is a partner for this conference i once again thank dr uh, professor dr uh, uh, shreesh sahadri uh, for this wonderful effort uh, with the sbi technologies with this conference and also for uh, his uh, sincere efforts and hard work to uh, write this paper and uh, uh, and i uh, thank thank uh, a lot uh, thank him a lot uh, and uh, i wish uh, this conference a best success uh, thank you very much watch this video like this video subscribe to this channel to watch many more videos like these of great personalities share this video with your friends to subscribe to this channel have a good day